There are some basic physics that we need to understand in order to be able to think fly fishing and fly casting as one unified whole. The first thing I want to tell you a bit about is the line loop. A good understanding of the line loop will help you to know how to cast on the water when you face different conditions. A line loop is formed a bit like this. You have an upper line, you have a line front, and you have a lower line. When it's moving out over the water, it rolls so that the upper line moves forward. This creates like a rolling movement. In terms of line loops, what we're looking for are narrow loops that fly out over the water. The reason for this is that it's very small, meaning that it doesn't take a lot of friction in the air and it's easy for the line to roll out and place the fly on target. What we're not interested in are big loops, because big loops are inefficient. They have too much air resistance and it's difficult for them to unroll the line and place the fly on target. So we want narrow loops that fly out in a controlled way across the water. Many people talk about adding power to your cast or getting power into the fly line. I think we should be talking about how we get speed into our fly line. Speed is very important because it helps you to cheat gravity for a long period of time. And there are two factors that help you to create speed in your fly cast. One is your acceleration how you accelerate the rod. You have to remember that when you're fly casting, you come from a position behind you, and then you have to go forward. And in this motion, you have to start up slowly, and then increase the speed as you move forward. This has to be a smooth acceleration, starting slow, ending fast. The next factor that helps you to create speed in your fly line is the stop you make with the fly rod. So when you accelerate from the position behind you to your front stop, the stop needs to be abrupt. The reason for this is that the rod is bending when you cast it forward. And then when you stop it, it goes like this. The tip of the rod will do like this. This motion is what is creating the speed in your fly line. Simply that the fly rod counterflexes, we call it, moves a bit down and then straightens up again. That motion creates speed in your fly line. So to have a good uh, stop is actually to make the rod do this motion. If you have a too soft stop, the rod will be too slow to create speed. The line loop is a system of interdependent mechanisms. And the reason why the line on rolls is due to speed, of course, loop size, and friction. Friction is important to understand in terms of how the line distributes speed throughout the line system. The friction of the upper line is the leader and the fly. If you have a long leader and a large fly, it can be difficult to turn over the fly because the friction on the upper line is too high. The friction on the lower line is the friction you have from the line that moves through the guides of the rod. If you have a very high friction on your lower line, it will also affect the speed on the upper line because the line will unroll faster. This means that you will not be able to cast as long distances, but you can control the fly very well and you will always present the fly on a stretched leader. If you have a very low friction on the lower line, you can cast longer distances, but it can be difficult to control the roll of the line. And sometimes uh, you will use all the speed in the system before the fly is turned over, if the friction is very low. So this is important to understand, 
that you have a system of frictions that affect each other in how the line rolls. And you can use this if you want to set up your fly line in a good way. For instance, when I fish in the stream, like here or in a river, I don't have to cast long distances. Then I would like to have a large friction on my lower line, simply because I can get a very good presentation. If I want to go coastline fishing where distance is key, I would like to have a low friction on my lower line so that I can cast further distances. This is how the line loop works in terms of how you choose line systems for different types of fly fishing. What I've just told you about the interdependent mechanisms in a fly cast and how speed is distributed throughout the line can be used when you're fishing. Today I'm casting into a strong headwind and I would like to increase the speed of the line to roll over the fly and present it on a stretched leader. So what I do is I increase the speed by raising the rod. I stop the rod and then I pull the rod back a bit. That will increase the speed of the upper line. Let's take a look at it. So I do my fly cast, come back, release the line and then I raise the rod to create the effect of gaining more speed into the fly line. If on the other hand I want the fly to have time to come down, I can slow down the speed of the line by dropping the rod. It looks like this. I do my cast, I stop and then I drop the rod while I'm shooting the line. Then the fly line will fall down and it will have some time to go down before it starts to come across.